Good morning, everyone. Okay, so let's start. Lots of you are here. Well, where is my pen? Okay, so yesterday we have learned how to subtract vectors and uh, what is the way to multiply a vector with a scalar, right? Yes, good morning everyone, those who have just joined. Uh, so, there were two cases, right? So let's just very quickly get this right. Suppose I suppose I give you something like suppose I give you something like uh, let's say uh, c vector equal to minus five into a vector. Okay. So what can we what can we say about directions? What can we say about directions of c vector and a vector? Come on. What can we say about direction of C vector and A vector? Yes, very good Tamanna, that's right. Well done Divya, Krisha, that's right. Direction of C vector is negative is not correct. No, the correct answer is that these two vectors C vector and A vector are opposites, right? The direction of C vector and A vector are opposite to each other, right? Okay, I, I hope that is absolutely clear. So that is if A vector is in this direction, if A vector is in this direction, then C vector will be opposite to that. Okay. Right. No, that's wrong Rahul. C towards left, A towards right. No, not like that. Sorry, wrong. It could be anywhere, but whatever it is, it is that A and C are opposite to each other in direction. Right. So that is what is the meaning of this minus sign again, right? This means C is opposite to A. That's what it means, wherever A is, right? Okay, fine. Now, now let's go to, let's go to another way of addition or another law of addition. Okay, right? Now we are going to talk about another law of addition.
and that law is parallelogram law of addition of vectors okay that law is parallelogram law of addition of vectors so earlier we have seen triangle law of addition triangle law of subtraction now it's time for another law parallelogram law of addition now what this law is is it does that it's an it's one this law is one more way this law is one more way to add vectors okay we have already studied triangle law this is one more way to add vectors okay so now let's let's see what this law is right and what are the steps so step 1 draw let's say we want to okay if we want to add write it as follows if we want to draw a vector plus b vector okay suppose we want to draw this so for step 1 is draw both vectors from same point that is with common tail right so step 1 draw both vectors with common tail okay so let's see what it would look like let's uh you know let's say that this is vector a and uh, let's say that this is vector b all right okay so we have drawn both of those from the same point or from the common tail right they have a common tail now step 2 complete complete a parallelogram complete a parallelogram using the two vectors as adjacent sides so what this means is we we take these two we take these two sides these two as adjacent sides adjacent means next to each other right okay so we take these two as adjacent sides of a parallelogram we have to draw a parallelogram now using these right so let me complete the parallelogram do you understand i have completed a parallelogram of course if you draw it with a ruler it would be easier right i i am not being able to draw it very nicely frankly because my drawing is not so good yeah so like this clear we completed the parallelogram okay step 2 clear everyone is step 2 clear have a look at what i have drawn i took these two a vector and b vector and made a parallelogram out of it right okay now step 3 step 3 draw a diagonal vector from the common tail from the common tail of a vector and b vector to the opposite corner right or vertex if you understand geometrical 
geometry related language then vertex so what have we got here we take we draw a diagonal vector from the common tail so we take the common tail of a and b from there we draw a vector to the opposite corner so from the common tail to the opposite corner okay right okay and finally finally step four we just name it and we are done step four this diagonal vector or this vector okay this vector that you have just drawn is r vector which is equal to okay so this is the addition vector that's how you add so in four steps in four steps you have added a vector plus b vector so this is r vector again r vector r vector stands for a vector plus b vector okay that's how you do it clear are all the steps clear everyone again i would i would request you to remember these steps because you may have to use this law okay now of course uh, I, I am sure you will have a question what's the need right you will have a question what's the need for this second law we could add with triangle law also right no gracie i have drawn dotted line because there is nothing over there okay so that was just to complete the parallelogram okay so so it is that why do we need one more law to add right we already have one more uh, one triangle law to add why don't why don't we just do it like that well actually both laws are same let me tell you that both the laws are same and they give the same result let's see why whatever we have done here is correct okay and how how is it related with triangle law let's have a look i'm going to change the page oh yeah. okay fine there we go so let's see how this is same actually as triangle law right so to understand that you need to understand one sentence generally vectors can be shifted shifted that is moved okay shifted that is moved okay but not rotated please be careful generally vectors can be shifted or moved without changing their meaning okay so what do i mean what what is the what's this sentence telling you it's telling you that suppose listen to this carefully suppose this is a vector and i've drawn one b vector over there let's say like this so then what i can do is i can take this b vector and shift it shift that is move not rotate i can shift it like this and i can put it here if i want or i can put it here if i want or i can put it here i can put it wherever i want right i can shift it i can move it there but its meaning will not change right the vector itself will not change so here it is b vector there also it will be b vector because every vector is every vector is determined or has only two things one is magnitude and the other is direction so as long as as long as you don't rotate it see if i if i will only shift it you see the direction of arrow remains same do you agree everyone i hope all of you can see what i'm doing as long as you only shift it the direction of the arrow remains same yes okay 
right? This is one of those things that is very easy to explain on a computer, right? It would be nightmare to explain on a board, right? But here I can do it so easily, thanks to one note, right? So you can see you can shift it, direction does not change. Obviously, magnitude will not change. Why magnitude? Because magnitude is indicated by length. Come a pen in a pen am side mamuki the length badlay jai. Of course not, right? So magnitude is this length. So that obviously will not change, right? So that's why as long as you shift a vector, as long as you move or shift, but not rotate. Okay, there is no change in the meaning, right? It's all okay, no problem. Generally, avoid, right? There are some, there are some cases where doing this is not allowed. I think what? Maybe yeah, like a few three. I think after four or five chapters, we'll have to worry about it. Okay, right now we we don't have to worry about this. So such vectors are called free vectors. What is meaning of a free vector? It, you can move it anywhere. It's free to go, right? You can move it anywhere. It is free to go. It will not change anything, right? But see, if you rotate it, things get different. Have a look. If I'm going to, I wish I can rotate it here. Oh. If I'm going to rotate it, I, I believe all of you understand that the angle will change. For example, have a look. See, I rotated it. Right? I, I, I hope all of you could see that. I rotated it. The angle changed. Agreed? Right? So when you rotate it, the angle will change. Right? So if angle will change, that means the direction is changing. So it means the meaning will change. Right? So finally, we can just understand this sentence. Shifting vectors is allowed. Okay, no problem. No, nothing changes. But rotating some vector, rotating a vector is not allowed because it will change the vector right because it will change the vector so please remember this shifting a vector is allowed rotating a vector is not allowed okay looks like only saurabh is understanding all this others is all this clear or are you having questions For luck, only you are having this problem, I believe. Others, I think, are having it okay. Right. Now, what does this have to do with addition by parallelogram or addition by uh, triangle? Let's have a look. So, suppose I would draw a vector A here, and then someone gives me a vector B here, like this. To add them directly like this, which law should I use? Have a look at this. To add them directly, right? We want to add. Which law should we use? To add them directly, which law should we use in this situation? Okay, in this situation, as I have described, which law should we use? Yes, very good. We should use triangle law of addition follow follow the steps of triangle law what does it say from the head of first we draw the second correct so that is triangle law of addition not parallelogram law everyone right okay fine let's do something interesting i will I will draw the same vector B here, right? So basically what I'm, what I'm actually doing is I'm supposed to copy it, right? Again, copy paste is possible on a computer like this. Oh, sorry. Instead of copying, it got shifted. Just give me a minute. Okay. 
So now I have it here. See, it's just like I moved it, right? Correct. It's just like I moved it. So now, now I want all of you to just look at the yellow B. Okay. Just look at the yellow one, right? Don't look at the green one. Just look at yellow one. Ig ignore this for a while. Okay. Now, if we want to add, we should use which law? If we want to add, we should use which law? Yes, parallelogram law because their tails are together. So if we add it, it's going to be something like this. Right? If we add this, it's going to be something like this, right? And then we make a diagonal. And then we, oh, sorry. Yeah, then we make a diagonal like this. Do you see? Do you all see that if actually B vector would have been here? Still, still this pink one would have always been R vector equal to A vector plus B vector. Either way, even by triangle law and even by parallelogram law. Agreed? Yes or no? I hope you, you understand what I'm saying. Even by triangle law or parallelogram law, it would have been the same. So, what's the key thing to understand? What's the key thing to understand? Both these laws are correct, of course, and they always give the same answer, right? They always give the same answer, right? I hope you understood that. Yes, agreed, Rohan, it's just like that. So, so why to have two laws? Simple. When, when you are given vectors head to tail like this, then you use triangle law. It's easy to do it. But when you are given vectors with common tail like this, then you use parallelogram law. I hope that makes total sense to you. Right? Both are always correct and they give the same answer, right? It is up to you what you want to do. Jene jefave karo, right? Okay. Personally, I like this. My preference, my general preference is triangle law. That does not mean I don't know this, okay? I also know the parallelogram law. But like I said, this is my preference, okay? You can have your own preference, no problem. Right, let's go to the next thing now. Okay, next. Now we are going to talk about something very interesting, right? And that is components. Okay, first of all, components in plain English means parts. Components in plain English means parts, right? Okay, but we don't parts, we don't the components. Why we love to use difficult language, right? Okay. So let's see what we have here. So first of all, I'll take you through what components are in a very, in a very interesting way. Let's say that this is one vector A. Okay, let's say that this is one vector A. And here suppose is another vector B, right? Here suppose is another vector B, right? So then if you, if you write, if you draw the R vector by following, let's say triangle law, then you get R vector equal to A vector plus B vector. Now what this means is this R vector is actually made up of two vectors. Do you agree? Do you agree with this sentence? Have a look at this equation. That will help you realize what I'm saying. This R vector is actually made up of 
two vectors. Which two vectors? This R vector is made up of which two vectors? I'm not really satisfied. Are you all clear about this? Which two vectors? Yes, yes. Now I'm getting some answers. Okay. Right. Fine. Correct. So, so we can say, we can say that these are two parts or two components of what R vector. Correct. I think all of you do realize that. Right. Okay, but although although this is a very nice way to do it, right? But there is an even better way. And that better way is what people use everywhere, right? And it is called it is called rectangular components. Word but don't worry, I'll make it very easy for you. Rectangular components means those components that are perpendicular to each other okay generally rectangular no meaning but when you take perpendicular components it makes a rectangle okay that's why that's why we are calling them rectangular components okay i will tell you eventually but not right now Okay, so what does this mean? Have a look. Have a look. Suppose the same R vector. Let's say this is that same R vector. I could also imagine, I could also imagine or think of two vectors like this. Do you understand what I've drawn? Okay, so let me tell you why it's called a rectangle or why it is called rectangular. Again, if you draw the other side here, parallelogram law think about this. Take you in a rectangle, opposite sides are C and D vectors, right? Banigi rectangle, I hope you understand what we have drawn here, right? That's why this is called a rectangular. Yes, tada. Okay. So, what's what's the nice thing about this? The nice thing about this is that this is unique. Unique matlab. If you if you do it like this, if you write it like this, so that C vector is perpendicular to D vector, then you can get only one value of C vector and only one value of d vector right i hope you understand what i'm saying this is unique if you do it rectangularly if you do it rectangular then in this particular way it's going to be unique right baki to tame ani jem karva jao ne to to ghani badi possibilities hai kevi rite jo a a suppose thodok vadhu moto hoy to suppose a vector is all the way till here okay and then B vector would be from uh, sorry, yeah, from here to here. See, it's it's a completely different thing, but still this equation is right. So I hope you realize that in general, this is not unique. But when you talk about rectangular, it becomes unique. I hope you understand what I'm saying. What I mean to say is, suppose you'll suppose you'll think, okay, let's take C so big. No, then this will not be rectangular. Can't get perpendicular draw. I hope you understand. Right? So this is not possible here. It has to be like this only. Okay, but anyways, that's only a minor point. So what's the what's the use of yes, we are using 90 degree, that's why this has become a rectangle. Okay. Right? So what's the use of rectangular components? Let's talk about that. 
હવે બહુ આ એક બહુ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ પોઈન્ટ છે પ્લીઝ પ્લીઝ બી વેરી કેરફુલ એવરીવન લેટ સે દેટ દિસ ઇઝ એઝ યુઝઅલ ઈસ્ટ ઓન ધીસ સાઈડ વેસ્ટ હિયર નોર્થ હિયર સાઉથ હિયર ઓકે એન્ડ વી આર સ્પાઈંગ ઓકે એન્ડ રાઈટ વી આર સ્પાઈંગ સો સપોઝ ધીસ ઇઝ દેટ ટેરિસ્ટ હાઉસ રાઈટ the terrace starts from here right starts from origin let's say let's say the terrace starts from origin moves over there moves over here moves over here and uh, finally reaches this point okay finally reaches this point right okay so now So now if you would think about if you would think about uh displacement vector okay think about displacement vector right again displacement vector is a vector drawn from initial position to final position right i hope you remember that right from initial to final photo method just use the photo method so from here to there correct that would be the displacement vector so suppose this point is let's say 30 meter comma 40 meter let's say this point is 30 meter comma 40 meter right okay so i'm sure you have learned trigonometry so based on that based on that i am sure you understand that this distance is 30 meter and this distance is 40 meter agreed is everything in the diagram clear is everything in diagram clear all right so i'm going to write something here i can say that the displacement vector is actually 30 meter east al along with or and 40 meter north do you understand what i have written i'm waiting for you did you understand this okay let's make it let's make it even more clear what we are talking about see this is a vector displacement is a vector so do you realize that i could here make its two rectangular components one like this till here okay like let's call it c vector okay c and d i'm just taking some letters okay you can choose your own letter no problem let's say this is d vector so do you understand that i can also i can also write it in this form i can also write it in this form where c vector is a vector which is 30 meter in the east direction people be careful be careful yesterday i taught you that this is wrong this is wrong okay but this is correct what's the difference what's the difference between these two yes because because i am specifying that this is a vector zone a vector no uniform pair of it right vector team so because it is in the vector team yes it should have a direction right so that's why this is only magnitude so it's wrong but this is correct okay so do you see that c is 30 meter east and then plus d where d is actually 40 meter north right yes so d is 40 meter north so do you uh, do you understand that this is one component right and this is one more component again component means parts yes right okay 
Now, now the thing is, every time, the thing is, every time we don't, uh, you know, we don't like to specify east, west, north, south. Okay. Sometimes it's not even possible to decide that. So what we do is, what we do is for x axis and y axis, for x axis and y axis, we typically we have we have developed special symbols, right? For x axis and y axis, we have developed special symbols, right? Okay, so that's what we are going to talk about now, right? But first, I want all of you to understand that components are again here we are talking about rectangular components that means we are talking about these two which are perpendicular to each other as you can see right you could have also you could also have done it here i'm sure you recognize that it would still give you the same okay Yes, Veda. In that case, you should. Okay. So let's talk about those special symbols. Unit vectors. So what are unit vectors? Unit matlab one. Okay. Unit indicates one. Right. So what is a unit vector? Very simple definition. Okay, it's a definition. A vector whose magnitude is one. One or unit, okay. Unit at least one, right? A vector whose magnitude is one, right? One at unit or unity, right? That's what we call it in words. So a vector whose magnitude is one is called unit vector. Okay. A vector whose magnitude is one is called unit vector. Right? Now, think about this. Okay, let's, let's write it in symbol, first of all, just a second. So if vector A has magnitude one, then vector A is a unit vector, right? Okay. There is a, they have a special symbol. So they have a special symbol. Right? Unit vectors have a special symbol, everyone. So what's that special symbol for unit vector? What's a special symbol for unit vector? It will definitely be a hat or a cap, right? It's the vector is no uniform thing. But along with that, along with that, there will also be a separate, a slightly different sign. Okay, that's it. The, along with it, there is a slightly different sign, right? Okay, so what's that sign? Well, here, this. On, on the top of it, on the top of the symbol, you write an arrow, upward arrow like this. Okay, this is the symbol of unit vector. So what does that mean? If I write, if I write like this, If I write like this, okay, then that means, that means, it is a unit vector, okay. If you write like this, it's a unit vector. Okay. If you write like that, it becomes a unit vector. So 
if you write b b hat like this b hat or b cap how do we read it b hat or b cap okay whatever you like some people yes there's one more thing b caret right it amadi j tumare bol hoy no problem all the three are valid what this means is what this means is magnitude of this vector magnitude of the b vector is 1 that is what it means okay right so unit vectors are indicated by this symbol please remember that unit vectors are indicated by this special symbol che vector us okay it is a vector everyone right it is a vector but a special one right you can say it is the uh, it is the captain of that team right okay but sabse chota captain right now let's talk about the usage here how do we use this concept right okay see think about this very carefully a vector here let's say its length is 3 cm let's say its length is 3 cm right so suppose suppose i'll take one unit vector then its length will be one unit that is 1 cm i hope you understood that right then i'll have to draw three such unit vectors agreed do you understand what i'm saying right i i hope this is clear to all of you that a vector equal to 3 into unit vector right three times because we'll have to draw it three times okay now so you know this this actually demands for a symbol how should we write this okay out on all of high three into unit vector so a hat listen to this carefully and you can write it also a hat is the unit vector in same direction as a vector okay this is what we mean by this symbol whenever someone writes a hat a hat means the unit vector in same direction as a hat uh, sorry a vector similarly if someone would write b hat then that would mean unit vector in same direction as b vector right so so here what we have done is this one single blue arrow is a hat this another blue arrow is second a hat this third blue arrow is a hat so now i can finally write that instead of 3 into unit vector i can write 3 a hat okay instead of instead of 3 into unit vector i am putting this value let's let's take one more example okay this time you try it on your own suppose you'd have a b vector like this which is let's say 6 cm long then how should i write b vector it cannot be negative ayush because negative means opposite direction right of a vector so it cannot be negative the correct answer people the correct answer is 6 b hat the correct answer is 6 b hat right so do you realize do you all realize that when you write a vector like this do you write a vector whenever you write a vector like this this 6 indicates magnitude agreed 
yes or no and this of a vector ne hoy is be part a vector is actually having just two things magnitude and what's remaining what's remaining vector has two things magnitude and yes dharmi vector has two thing magnitude and direction very good to a baki riyu e direction indicate right okay so whenever we are writing it like this okay no problem don't we whenever we are writing it like this what we are doing is we are writing the magnitude separately and we are writing or indicating its direction separate okay we are writing the magnitude and direction separately right in fact you can do this for all vectors right for example do you understand that i can divide the 6 on the other side i can write it like this yes or no okay yeah right so finally in general okay so this is something that is always true right this is what we get do you identify with this this is written for b this is magnitude isn't it have a look at this formula yes jaykit if you have a question type it please right okay so please remember this everyone please remember this i can also i can also say this i can also say this in words okay no problem jake i can also say this in words to obtain unit vector to obtain unit vector in direction of a vector we divide a vector by its magnitude by its own magnitude right do you understand this sentence yes ankita you are right about that joy again again have a look at this see if you go back to this equation it is actually that 6 is the magnitude isn't it so symbol of magnitude is this right okay then remember magnitude is a scalar this is a scalar scalar means like a number correct you can simply divide this number on the other side if you divide it, if you divide this number on the other side what shall you get you we'll get b vector divided by magnitude of b is equal to b hat so that's what i have written here right again if you read this sentence okay i hope that made it clear all right then so please remember this formula and this is its meaning correct what i have written here is the meaning of that formula jo a one upon magnitude e lakho ke sidhu division ma lakho chale both are okay right not like you have a problem with either right so the key key thing to understand is that a vector can be written as a magnitude followed by unit vector agreed 
because unit vector actually indicates direction barabar ne unit vector actually indicates direction right so that's that is what we are going to use in components now right this is exactly what we are going to use in components okay so again coming uh, coming back to the rectangular component example that i was giving you okay we are going to use the same same example right we are going to use the same example right where we had the displacement vector let's say like this and we said that this delta r vector is in two parts for example 30 meter east and 40 meter north okay and i wrote it as a vector c plus a vector d right okay so we wrote delta r vector maybe as a vector c plus a vector d right and this is a right angle so now we are going to say we are going to define or you know we are we are going to say that unit vector unit vector in positive x direction unit vector in positive x direction is called okay i know naam the it has been given this name right you cannot ask why is called i hat or i caret or i cap again this is i caret right so unit vector that is in positive x direction is called i hat right and unit vector in positive y direction unit vector in positive y direction is called j hat okay this is very crucial you must remember it okay yes sir we are right hat is the symbol for unit vector again everyone if you recall okay when we put something on top of you know when we put this kind of symbol on top of a it means this is a unit vector so writing i hat is required because it is a unit vector tumhe unit vector ko ane pachi aavu lakho to no chale this is this is not even vector right okay it's in the wrong team so you must write the symbol of unit vector what is the symbol of unit vector this okay so so if you use it here i want all of you to think about this right away i'm a magnify karu padhe okay here we go right so that i can draw it properly are tha well okay so now we have ultra high resolution satellite image of the terrorist okay so look at look at c vector right look at c vector actually c vector was 30 meter in length okay actually c vector is 30 meter in length so do you realize do you realize that listen to this carefully grace i explained what is meaning of i hat and j hat we are writing hat because they are unit vectors and i and j are just letters we have chosen okay you have to choose that only because everyone in the world follows that okay so they are like names given okay they are like names given so if this is 30 meter do you realize i can draw 30 arrows like this of 1 cent 1 meter length yes or no 30 arrows agreed yes or no everyone are vara kaam karne ko de to so so that's why so that's why people listen to this carefully 
that means I am drawing, I am drawing 30 times I caret. Why I caret? Because I caret means any unit vector that you are drawing in x direction. This is positive x, correct? Right? X. Everyone, listen to this carefully. I am saying that each such one meter arrow, each such one meter arrow is actually I hat. Okay. I think it, it, it will, it shall be better if I draw a separate diagram, a new one. Okay. Let's not try to use it. So what I was saying is that if you would draw one I carrot, its length would be one centimeter. If you draw one more I carrot, its length would be one centimeter. If you draw one more I carrot like that, to make that C vector, which is 30 centimeter long, 30 meter long, sorry, not centimeter, meter, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, one meter, one meter, one meter, unit, don't forget, unit. Okay, so to do that, you'd have to draw 30 such eyes, right, like this. Okay, so that's why I'm writing this. How many of you understood this? I plus I plus I plus I like that. How many times? 30 times. Okay. Anyone has a question with this? Anybody? Okay. Sahil has a question. I will answer that. Okay. Okay, if we write C hat, okay, fine, Joy, you and I will have same question. I will answer that, right? Okay, so there, there is a good question here that can't we, can't we write it like this? Okay. Yes, we can. This is also correct. Okay, you, you can write it like this. Okay, but this is better. I'll tell you why it's better. If you look at this, you will not know, you will not know C vector is in which direction. I repeat, you will not know C vector is in which direction, right? You will not be able to know that. But if you write, if you write like this, if you write like this, you will know that C vector is definitely you will know that C vector is definitely in positive X direction, right? Okay, you won't know this. Okay, so you don't know this. But here you know that this is in positive X direction. Yes, the reason is, the reason is I caret is a special vector, right? I caret means unit vector which is in positive x direction, right? That's what you have to remember, right? That's what, that is how everyone deals with it, right? I hope that make, made it clear. Okay, I hope that made it clear. Joy and Sahil, I, I, I really hope you understood why we should write it like this. This is correct, this is okay, no problem, but that's better. That's it. Okay. Now, just like that. Okay. Just like that. Let's do it for D. Let's do it for D vector and then we'll wind it up. Okay. Just one minute. Have a look at D vector. D vector has a length 40 meter. Correct. D vector has a length 40 meter. So for making that D vector, for making that D vector like this, I will have to draw like this, correct? 40 times, 40 unit vectors. But this unit vector is J hat. This unit vector is J hat, right? Because once again, once again, J hat means unit vector in positive Y direction. Is this clear? Is this clear everyone?
okay so finally if i combine these finally if i combine this and we come to the last point for today we can write it like this right came out a c che ane a d che i hope i hope that is clear right you can't add remember remember 30 chairs plus 40 tables is not 70 anything right this is wrong i hope you understand you can't add just like 30x plus 40y is not 70 so you can't add them remember that Yeah, we're well done. Still, you couldn't add them in a single number, right? So, it won't help. Okay. So, this is it, right? That's it for today. This is how you finally write vectors. No, you get, you, why would you want to divide them? Divya, why would you want to divide them? The class is over. The class is over. I'm only answering questions. So hang on if you want to listen to answer. Okay. Or you want to ask your own questions. Right. Otherwise you could leave. No problem. I will not teach anything else now. Can we divide both of them by 10? Why? I mean, on, on your own, you cannot divide anything, right? If you divide, meaning will change. You can take 10 common. You can't add this, of course, because they are unlike terms. Okay. Sorry, sorry, just a minute. You cannot add them because this is 30 I carat and this is 40 J carat. They're different, right? It's just like this 30 apples plus 40 oranges is not anything 70 right this is nothing 70 i hope you understand that this is wrong fruits no get yes rahul we'll talk about that tomorrow all right okay Other than I carrot and J carrot, can we use any any other alphabet for our own? No, no, big warning. Okay, you must use I carrot and J carrot. I carrot for positive X, J carrot for positive Y. Fix it, right? Because if you will use something else, it will create a lot of confusion. Of course, physics will not be wrong. Okay, physics or maths will not be wrong, but it will create a lot of confusion for everyone. Vedant, it's because of direction. I explained that a lot yesterday. Vedant. I hope Arkan you understood, you got the answer to your question. All right. Anyone has any more questions? What rain has a vector? Sort of. I don't understand what you're saying, sort of. Okay, I think that's enough. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.